guys so we'll start with the new chapter now that is time of supply see whatever we have learnt in chapter 5 is with respect to the provisions contained in igst act from now again we will continue with our cgst journey from now we will continue with our cgst journey guys so time of supply provisions are contained in cgst act and not in igst act so please be careful no need to get confused so whatever we will be learning here is from here okay so if it is igst act i will specifically mention if not it is always understood that it is cgst act guys so anything we learn in this chapter would be the provisions contained in cgst act guys fine so till now what we have discussed come on guys <clears throat> sir whether an activity is a supply or not a supply so that is whether an activity or transaction is a supply we will decide as per section 7 read with schedule 1 schedule 1 then once an activity or transaction becomes supply we need to identify whether it is a supply of goods or supply of services as per schedule 2 next sir from the supply we need to remove two things which are not taxable under gst which is negative list and exemption list negative list is given in schedule 3 along with section 7 2 okay means section 7 2 has to be read with schedule 3 guys then exemption list is given in section 11 of cgst act or section 6 of igst act read with notification read with notification okay sir once we remove this two category that is negative list and exemption list from supply we get taxable supply then we should also identify who is the person who is liable to pay tax that is supplier or recipient or electronic commerce operator if it is electronic commerce operator only four services have been notified that is rath as per section 9 pi or 5 pi and read with notification 9 pi is of cgst 5 pi is of igst then if it is a recipient who is liable to pay tax we call that mechanism as reverse charge mechanism as per section 93 or 94 of cgst act read with notification or 53 or 54 of igst act read with notification Pawan, should I come and open your mouth? Huh? Next, so once we decide who is liable to pay, in any other case, it will be supplier under forward charge mechanism, guys. Next, we have to also identify whether the taxable supply is intrastate or interstate. Whenever the location of supplier and place of supply is within the same state or union territory, we call that supply as intrastate supply. In that case, CGST plus IGS, sorry, CGST plus SGST would be limited, or if it is union territory, in place of SGST, CG, SGST, it will be UTGST. Okay. In any other case, that is when the location of supplier and place of supply is in two different state or two different union territory, one state, one union territory, or import, export, or if there is any supply by or to SEZ unit or SEZ developer, it will always be interstate supply and IGST would be levied by central government. Fine, sir. We decided who should pay tax and what they should pay. CGST, na, SGST or IGST. We decided when should they pay. When should they pay. That is what the time of supply will tell, guys. Time of supply will tell when supply is deemed to be provided. When supply is deemed to be provided, means it is completed then and there and So, for example, guys, various events will happen. For example, assume <coughs> I am placing the order for you for the goods on 10th October. I am placing the order for you for supply of goods on 10th October. Fine. You sent the goods from your place on 15th October. You sent the goods from your place on 15th October and it reached me. It is delivered for me on 18th October. And you sent me the invoice on 25th October. Then I made the payment on 30th October. I made the payment on 30th October, guys. Okay. These are the different events which happened with respect to the same transaction. Same, only one purchase is there, not multiple purchase. I purchased the good from you for which different events happened. I placed the order with you. I am the recipient, you are the supplier. I placed the order with you on 10th October. We call it as purchase order. Then you sent the good from your place on 15th October, but it is delivered for me on 18th October. 
and I you sent the invoice to me. Supplier will send the invoice to the recipient on 25th October. He has sent it. You have sent it. Then I made the payment on 30th October. Now we have a confusion. What is the time of supply? When did supply take place? Sir, take sir. Inki banki you put and take it. No. Okay. We have to decide as per the time of supply provisions, guys. We have to decide as per the time of supply provision. Okay, don't, okay, it is not like blindly we tell it, we have to follow the provisions. So we will decide there, okay. So as different events is happening on different dates, it is very important for the person who is liable to pay GST to decide what is time of supply. What is time of supply? Because that is the date on which is liability to pay create. Liability to pay GST will be created. Okay, now assuming guys. Assuming 25th October, sir. 25th October is the time of supply. On that day, you should pay a GST. Na? No. Supply is deemed to be made on 25th October. Time of supply will tell this date supply is made. That means liability is created on that day. But is that the same due date? No. Due date would be 20th of next month. Due date for payment would be 20th of next month, guys. 20th of next month means time of supply will help you to decide on what day you are supposed to pay the GST to the government. If you delay beyond 20th November, then 21st November interest will start. Anyway, you have to pay but along with the interest. Is that clear? Yes. See, in this chapter, we will not be learning anything related to it. But I know students will get confused that ah, time of supply itself is a due date for payment. And the. No, actually, that is why I just mentioned that. Yeah, so in this chapter, we will be learning only about this. In payment chapter, we have a separate payment chapter, returns chapter and all. There we will be learning what is the due date for payment. So time of supply is not, hey Arvind, sorry, Arvind, no, no. yeah, please pay attention here. What is going on there between you and Ajit? Yeah, time of supply is the date on which supply is deemed to be made. That day goods or services is supplied guys. But is it the date on which we are supposed to pay tax? No. So whenever the time of supply. So assume time of supply is on any day from 1st October to 31st October. The due date to pay GST for that supply would be 20th November. Whoever is paying it. Either supplier or recipient or electronic commerce operator. That doesn't matter here. And even time of supply provision is common for intra or inter both. There is no separate provision. But here, time of supply provision is separately given for forward charge and reverse charge. If forward charge is applicable, who is liable to pay GST? Supplier. When time of supply is there. Same way, if reverse charge mechanism is applicable, when is the time of supply? They have given it, guys. Clear? So, in this chapter, we will be learning when the liability to pay GST is created and not due date to pay GST. But, the due date to pay GST depends on time of supply. If you don't know time of supply, you cannot decide the due date to pay GST, guys. <clears throat> yeah. GST is payable on supply of goods or services. A supply consists of elements that can be separated in time, like purchase order, agreement, dispatch of goods, delivery of goods, or provision or performance of service. Entry in the records, that is when you have recorded in your books, payment and entry of the payment in the records or deposit in the bank. So there will be different events happening on different dates. So the question that arises here is, at what point of time in the offer set transaction the GST becomes payable? Time is the essence of levy, that is to levy GST. Tax is imposed when the supply is made. Hence, it is important to determine the time of supply. Once the time of supply is determined, levy will be made. Means GST would be levied. Point of taxation <coughs> means the point in time when the goods have deemed to be supplied or services are deemed to be provided. Means time of supply or we also call it as point of taxation. Better you guys in the law they have used the word time of supply only. You use the same in your answers. Time of supply or point of taxation means the time at which or the date on which the goods is deemed to be supplied 
or delivered or it is uh, services are supplied guys that is the date on which supply took place that is what we are deciding here the point of taxation enables us to determine the rate of tax value and due dates for payment of taxes okay now see even sometimes the rates of tax might be changing clear it might be changing so here time of supply is on what day 25th october what rate will be applicable whatever rate is there on 25th october on the date of time of supply whatever is the rate that will be applicable clear clear Yes, Next, under GST, the point of taxation that is the liability to pay CGST or SGST or even IGST will arise at the time of supply as determined for goods and services. In other words, time of supply indicates the point in time when the liability to pay tax arises. It is important to note here that Though the liability to pay tax arises at the time of supply, the same can be paid to the government by the due date prescribed with reference to the said time of supply. For instance or example, if time of supply of a given supply is assumed 25th May guys. So time of supply we have to decide it. Okay, It will not always be given in the question. So we have to decide it. How to decide we will see. We have to learn this entire chapter. Yeah. So time of supply they have given it as 20th, 25th May. The tax liable thereon would be payable latest by 20th June, guys. That is 20th of next month. The due date to pay GST is 20th of next month. Clear? That is the person who is covered in section 9, not 10, because he will pay quarterly. Section 10 who, who covers whom? Composition supplier. He will pay tax uh, quarterly for him different due date is there. Okay. So for regular person who is covered under section 9, it is 20th of next month guys and actually for those whoever is covered in section 9 they have also introduced a scheme called QRMP quarterly return monthly payment actually whoever is covered in section 9 please pay attention this all we will be learning in returns chapter <clears throat> but again some some information I would be giving it now whoever is liable to pay tax as per section 9 that is normal levy or normal scheme what we call they have two options regularly they have to pay tax monthly and file the returns monthly two returns are there gstr1 and gstr 3 b okay two two returns every month they should file but they told okay if you are a small supplier whose turnover is within some limit but still you are following section 9 then you need not file returns quarterly sorry monthly file it quarterly but pay tax monthly but pay tax monthly so one, that is not available for everyone. They have put some turnover criteria. Only if your turnover is within that, yes, you are eligible for QRMP. And even QRMP is like optional. If you want, you can choose it. If not, file monthly returns only. Clear? So I have not talked about that QRMP here. So it is regular person who is not following QRMP. In that case, what is the due date for him to make payment? 20th of next month, guys. Which is the due date prescribed in CGST Act for the supplier filing GST return on? monthly basis monthly basis guys cgst acts on 17 states provisions to determine time of supply of goods under section 12 and time of supply of services under section 13 of the act even 14 also talks about time of supply but that is when there is a change in the rates but that is not a part of your inter syllabus guys only two sections are covered for you at inter level totally three are there 12 13 14 but 14 is not a part of your inter syllabus come to the page where you have written the section number under cgst act under cgst yeah we are done till 11 guys 11 is what talks about exemption <coughs> now write 12 cgst we are under cgst cgst 12 time of supply of goods Time of supply of goods. Next, 13. 13. Time of supply of services. Time of supply of services. Next, 14. 14. Time of supply in case of time of supply in case of change in rate of tax 
in case of change in rate of tax in bracket not covered in bracket not covered yes guys only two sections and actually if you understand 12 easily 13 becomes very easy if you understand 12 13 becomes very easy and each of this section has six six subsections i want you guys to remember along with subsections along with subsections guys easy because 12 and 13 is arranged in same order so if you know the subsections of 12 13 becomes very easy guys 13 becomes very easy chill let us start with 12 <coughs> Time of supply of goods, section 12, silence, of CGST Act 17, subsection 1, subsection 1 is telling, it will be as per section 12, and that's all. The liability to pay tax on goods shall arise at the time of supply as determined in terms of provisions of this section, that's all. The time of supply of the goods will be as per this section, that is what, it's like a more of heading, it's more of like a heading, that is actually what is given in subsection 1 actually. Subsection 2 talks about forward charge mechanism, guys. Come on. Under forward charge mechanism, who is liable to pay tax? Supplier. Now, who will check what is the time of supply? Supplier. Because he is the one who is liable to pay tax. He should know when to pay. He should know when to pay. So, he has to check time of supply provision. Okay. Now, subsection 2. The time of supply of goods would be earliest of the following dates earliest of following dates what are those three dates are there date of issue of invoice or due date of issue of invoice or date of receipt of payment this is what was there when the act was introduced but later this third point they removed it by way of notification telling for goods date of receipt of payment is not there guys clear but actually in the section still it is there but they have told they have issued a notification telling the date of receipt of payment is not relevant for goods and yeah so even if by chance if you are referring institute material and all it the at the beginning they would have given everything like this only at the end they would have told it is not applicable so, so that is how it will be so please be careful i have also given a note for it with effect from 15th november 2017 date of payment is not applicable for goods as per notification number 16 bar 2017 hence gst is huh? So, 66 bar 2017, hence GST is not applicable on receipt of any advance with respect to goods. Now, I have agreed to supply goods to you next month for which I have received advance from you. Am I liable to pay GST on it? No. When I am I liable to pay GST is when I issue the invoice or when I am supposed to issue the invoice. Supposed to issue the invoice means due date to issue invoice guys. So, as on today, only two points are relevant here. Date of payment is dead thing so only two points which is date of issue of invoice or due date to issue invoice sir date of issue of invoice obviously supplier will be knowing when did he issue the invoice what is the due date to issue invoice it is given in section 31 guys it is given in section 31 so we have to now connect to section 31 so time of supply depends on due date to issue invoice due date to issue invoice is given in section 31 guys yeah, the due date to issue invoice is given under section 31 of the act, which mentions that the invoice must be issued. Invoice must be issued means within this time, supplier has to issue invoice. It is the deadline not for a time of supply to issue invoice. Clear? Yeah. Different type of transactions are there. First one, where supply involves movement of goods. If there is a movement of goods from supplier place to recipient place, then when should supplier issue the invoice? On or before the time of removal of on or before the time of removal of goods. That is before the goods are removed from supplier place, he has to issue invoice. On that day, on the date of removal also he can issue or before that. Or before that. In my example, assuming there is a movement of goods from you guys to me, in that case, on the date of removal, what is the date of removal? 15 October. That day you are supposed to issue the invoice or before that. Or before that. And here sir, physical invoice, uh, electronic invoice, any form any form but invoice has to be issued on or before 15th october as per my example clear yes if there is movement next 
where the supply doesn't involve movement of goods. I gave some example. I went to Tata Chromo. I went to Reliance Digital and purchased something there only. There is no movement from supplier to recipient. Recipient went to supplier's place and purchased the goods. So in our previous class, we already discussed what is the place of supply in this scenario. Now we are discussing when should supplier issue invoice guys. On or before the delivery of the goods are making available thereof to the recipient. Means when it is before the goods are delivered to the recipient, invoice has to be issued. Yeah. So normally that will billing will happen on that day one. Okay. When as and when you go and purchase the goods, they will bill it there. And only when you pay, they will allow you to carry the goods. Yeah. So please don't get confused with place of supply also. There in the previous chapter, we have discussed what is place of supply. Okay, there also movement, no movement we have seen. But here it is due date to issue invoice. Means supplier within what date should he issue invoice, guys. Next, in case of continuous supply of goods, where successive statement of goods or successive payments are involved. Assume you are supplying me. I have given a contract to you to supply the goods throughout the year. Every day in, day out, you are supplying goods to me. So obviously we may not issue invoice every day and settle the payment every day. So what we would have had a contract telling, okay, once in a week you send me the statement, I will make the payment or once in a month or once in 15 days, we will have an understanding. It depends on the supplier and recipient. Assume in our contract, we have 15 days payment. So every day you will be supplying goods to me. Once in 15 days, you will send the details in the statement. What all goods you have sent every day during this 15 days based on that, I will make the payment to you. 15 days once you will send the statement and I will make the payment. In that case, what is the due date to issue invoice on or before the issuance of each statement of account? Who is issuing the statement of account? Supplier. To whom? Recipient. Or each payment is received, guys. Or each payment is received. The day you receive the payment or the day you send the statement. But in the law, they have not given which earlier or later and all. So it should be understood as earlier only, whichever is earlier. Clear? For example, assume you sent me the statement on 10th October, but I made the payment on 12th October. So what is the due date to issue invoice? 10th October. It would be 10th October, guys. <clears throat> yeah. This is in case of continuous supply of goods. Next, where the goods are supplied on approval for sale or return basis. It is a topic covered at foundation level in accounts. When the sold goods are sent on sale or return basis okay here actually sale has not happened okay let me just explain assume guys supplier has sent the goods to recipient not sold sent the goods to the recipient is, is it a sale sir no if recipient approves it if you tell okay i am happy with the goods it will be a sale or supplier would have given some time assume supplier has given three months time so within three months, the recipient doesn't respond anything. It's silent. It is assumed to be sold. It is assumed to be approved and sold. Guys. So it is a sale for the supplier. Clear? So when he is deemed to, means when supplier has to issue invoices at the time of sale. At the time of sale. For example, it was sent assume on 10th October, but it is approved by the recipient. Approved by the recipient. Let us keep it as 1st October better. Uh, 20th October. Within the time, he approved it. So, what is the due date to issue in March? 20th October. Okay, sir. Next, sir, by the end of three months also is silent. By the end of three months also is silent. So, on 31st December, three months will end. 20, okay, year is not given, fine. So, 31st December, three months period ends. So, at the end of three months, it will be deemed to be approved by the recipient. So, what is the due date to issue in March? 1st January. 1st January guys. Is that clear? Yes. What they are telling here is, see, supplier is free to give any number of months or any number of days to the recipient. But if he is giving more than 6 months, then we are ending at 6 months. Okay. For example, assume supplier has given 9 months time to the recipient. He has sent the goods on 1st October. They are telling at the end of 6 months. That is on 31st March. It is deemed to be supplied and supplier has to issue invoice. Supplier has to issue invoice. Means indirectly they are telling don't give more than 6 months. No fool will give, actually give. But if you are giving, you will be fool. But I am not the fool. That is what the government is telling. Is that clear? Because obviously goods, you will give time. 15 days, 20 days, 1 week, 1 month, 2 month, 3 month, fine. But not more than 6 months. 
if you are giving fine sir you are very liberal but i am not clear so they are telling at the end of six months from the date it is sent it is deemed to be supply and supplier has to issue invoice is that clear yes sir on or before the time of supply on or before the time of supply means if it is accepted in my previous example first one or two example i gave na first example on 20th october it is approved so what is the due date to issue invoice 20th october in second example i told 3 months time 3 months time expired in that case what is the due date to issue invoice first january first january now sir supplier is given 9 months time sir in that case or six months from the date of removal of goods sir it is not it is not at all accepted till it is neither accepted nor rejected till now but one six months period end it is deemed to be supplied and the supplier has to issue invoice whichever is earlier is whichever is earlier sir it is accepted but in the seventh month sir it is accepted but in the eighth month sir it is already supplied at the end of six months only it is supply at the end of six months only Hope you guys got it. Means indirectly they are telling the supplier don't give more than six months. Don't give more than six months time. But openly they are not telling. They are limiting you to give more than six months. Yes, sir. Goods are rejected after six months. It will return back. So you can issue a credit note, debit note. There is a policy. You can claim a refund also. Ah, that also you can. Okay, but not you can claim refund or else you can adjust it in your future liability. Okay, so if you have paid excess tax and all, sir, it gone forever. No, okay. If by chance if you have paid excess later, there is a sales returns and all, then there is a procedure. You have to issue some document to the recipient, and if he has already claimed with credit, he has to reverse it. The recipient, if he has already claimed input tax credit of that, then can I claim the refund? Obviously, no government will not give it. He has to reverse it with respect to whatever goods he has returned. Only then I will be able to claim the refund or adjust it in my future liabilities guys yeah chalo guys this is the due date to issue invoice which is given in section 31 you are supposed to know it because if there is any question on time of supply you are expected to know even what is the due date to issue invoice which is given in section 31 which is mandatory yeah i have given some illustration let us see <coughs> Even in case of higher purchase, whenever the invoice is issued, that is the time of supply for the entire value. You may receive payment whenever you want, but the time of supply would be because the time of payment is not at all there now here. Date of payment is not at all there for goods. They have removed it. So it will be either the date of issue of invoice or <coughs> the due date to issue invoice. Yes, guys. Illustration one. Spins Private Limited enters into contract for supply of 100 office chairs at 15,000 with Joy Sales on 21st August. So, the contract is entered on 21st August. Chairs are removed from bureaus of Spins Private Limited on 5th September. That is supplier's place, guys. It is removed from supplier's place on 5th September along with the invoice of even date. Means, even the invoice is also issued on that date. Sales joy sales has paid 30 percent of total contract value on 21st august as an advance they have given it already and balance 70 percent is paid after delivery of chairs on 10th september come on guys what should be the due date to issue invoice 5th september the date on which it is removed on what date is actually issued 5th september so what is the time of supply 5th september for how much only 30 percent 70 percent or 100 percent 100 percent because for goods, advance is not taxed. Advance is not taxed. When it is taxed or what is the time of supply is only when you issue the invoice or the due date to issue invoice, guys. Since the invoice is issued on the date of removal of goods, it is issued within the prescribed time given in section 31. And hence, the time of supply for payment of tax on the entire contract value of 15 lakhs. Sir, how did we get 15 lakhs? 15,000 into 100 is the date of issue of invoice that is 5th september guys no gst will be payable on advance of 4 lakh 50 that is 30 percent is received on 21st august only now on that day gst will not be paid on the entire 15 lakh what is the time of supply 5th september so gst would be paid on or before 20th october guys yeah 
So on 4,50 GST will not be paid when it is received on 21st August because for goods advance when it advance is received it is not tax clear. So you guys can means this line also it is good if you mention it so that you are showing that even I know that advance is not tax. <coughs> So if they have given the amounts partially and all, please clearly mention the time of supply for entire 15 lakh is 5th September. Because some of the students may stop there only. The time of supply is 5th September. Clear. For what value? Is it for entire 100% or 70% or 30%? Please mention that also when they have given the breakup like this. If they have simply mentioned it is sold for 15 lakh and so and so dates, they have not given any advance and all, then in that case, fine. You can mention time of supply is 5th September. Clear, but when the situations are like this, when it is given as proportionately different amount is received on different dates, please mention the amount also. Yes, guys. So for continuous supply of goods also, I have given an example here. You can see date of receipt of goods. Okay, goods are supplied on different date. It is received 10th November, 20th November, 25th November, 30th November. It is like continuous supply. So see, continuous means it will happen number of times, but I have given four dates here. Okay, I have given four dates. Then, date on which statement of account is given, who will give this to whom? Supplier to recipient, 4th December. Date of invoice is 6th December. So, is it given within the time? No. Date of payment is 8th December, guys. So, actually invoice has to be issued on or before earlier of these two dates. Earlier of 4th December or 8th December is what? 4th December. Payment no, 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 see here each statement of account or each payment is received. Okay, chalo, chalo. when the invoice has to be issued, I am talking about when the invoice has to be issued, it is the date on which statement of account is rendered or the date on which payment is made. But in the law, they are not given whichever is earlier. But I told you, obviously, it has to be understood as whichever is earlier, guys. So, on what date the statement of account is given? 4th December. On what day payment is made? 8th December. So, what is the due date to issue invoice, guys? 4th December. Clear, sir, Alvin? Ah. The due date to issue invoice is 4th December. But actually, on what date is issued? 6th December. So, what is the time of supply here? 4th December. Hope you understood. So, you have to go like this step by step. All of the sudden, you cannot go and decide the time of supply, guys. Clear? I repeat once again. <clears throat> See, goods are supplied on different dates. So, we have, it is continuous supply of goods statement of account is given by the supplier on 4th december whereas the recipient has made the payment on 8th december as per this point what is the due date to issue invoice what is the date due date to issue invoice it should be the date on which statement of account is given or payment is made so it is understood whichever is earlier okay so earlier of these two dates is what 4th december so due date to issue invoice was 4th december but actually invoice is issued on what day? 6th December. So now earlier of these two days. 6th December or 4th December. It is 4th December. It is 4th December. Here also I have given an example. You can see with respect to continuous supply. Under C point. Supply of filter water cans in, in office daily but billed on 10th of every month. Okay, so statement of accounts will be given by the supplier what all cans he has supplied, how many cans he has supplied during the month. Payment will be made on 10th, guys. Clear? So earlier of the two will be the due date to issue invoice. Even same thing happens here also. So every day they will be supplying the water cans. Okay, so once in a week or once in 15 days, payments would be settled. Clear now? No doubt with respect to this. Okay, only for this payment date we have to consider. That is in case of continuous supply of goods. That is not directly to decide time of supply, but to decide due date to issue invoice. Yeah, come to the questions, problems. Yeah, question number one. A machine has to be supplied at site. Huh? A machine has to be supplied at site. It is done by sourcing various components from vendors and assembling the machine at site. The details of various events are as follows. Please observe guys. 17th September, purchase order with advance of 50,000 is received for goods worth 12 lakh. See, 
purchase is with respect to 12 lakh but for that advance is given how much 50000 is advance tax separately for goods no guys whereas for services it is actually taxable please be careful only for goods it is not taxable and the entry duly made in seller's books of account so seller has already made the entry will it matter for us no 20th october the machine is assembled tested at site and accepted by the buyer guys so machine obviously there is a moment of goods okay so on what date it is removed and delivered already 20th october what is the date on which they have uh, removed and delivered it it is on the same day okay you can see there machine is assembled tested at site and accepted by the buyer so it is removed and delivered it on the same day so what is the due date to issue invoice 20th october the date on which it is removed from the place of supplier then 23rd october invoice raised means issued raised means issued by supplier to recipient what was the due date to issue invoice 20th october what is the actual date of issue of invoice 23rd october which is the earlier date 20th october 4th November, balance payment of 11,50,000 is received. Here, payment date is not relevant for us. Payment date is not relevant for us, guys. Determine the time of supply. So, first explanation, as per section 12.2, subsection 2, I have asked you guys to remember along with the subsections, the time of supply of goods would be earliest of the following dates. You can also mention the time of supply of the goods taxable under forward charge mechanism would be earliest of two. Okay, which is that due date to issue invoice or else date of issue of invoice or due date for issue of invoice. So you can also mention as per section 31. Okay. And sir, can I mention the date of payment also? See, actually you can. Okay, even date of payment you can mention because that is how it is given in the section. Later in the note you can mention it is removed by way of notification. Clear? So you can do that provided you have a time. Provided you have a time. If not, you can stick like this. Okay, only for two points whichever is relevant. In the given case, the due date to issue invoice is 20th October as the goods are removed for delivery on that date as per section 31, subsection 1. See, there you need not, sub, you means if you don't remember the subsection also fine, at least remember 31. And 31 we will again cover when we go to invoices chapter. We have a chapter for invoice credit note and debit note. There also in detail again I will cover when I go to that chapter guys. But as of now, what we have covered is not entire section 31 only what is relevant to the time of supply and the actual date of issue of invoice is 23rd october so the earlier of the two dates is 20th october therefore the time of supply for the purpose of payment of tax for the entire amount i told you to highlight that of 12 lakh is 20th october please yeah yes take down You mentioned the word here, taxable under forward charge mechanism. Take it down, take it down. If it is asked as descriptive, this is how you have to present. It, this kind of question can also be asked in MCQ. First decide and choose it. See, sometimes supplier might receive the payments in installments like EMI and all still your payment date is not at all considered so for whatever value he has raised the invoice entire would, value would be taxable for him based on time of supply guys even though the supplier has given a credit period to the recipient that is the headache of supplier who oh. then again that credit note debit note things will come what if recipient has not made the payment? What if he has defaulted and all? We will understand. Okay. Can supplier claim it? Those things and all we will be learning going forward, guys. Then, uh, yes, guys. I will just explain. Huh. I will just explain this once again. See, as per section 12, subsection 2, when forward charge mechanism is applicable, the supplier is the one who is liable to pay GST. The time of supply has to be decided, which is earlier of two dates. Date of issue of invoice 
and due date to issue invoice here sir on what day payment is made is advance received or payment is made later and all doesn't matter guys so in this question in this question 20th october is the date on which the machine is assembled that is by the supplier tested at site and accepted by the buyer so obviously this is the date on which it is removed from the supplier's place so as per the section 31 when supplier is supposed to issue invoice when it is removed from the supplier's place which in our case that is question number one is 20th october and actually when the invoice is issued 23rd october the due date to issue invoice was 20th october whereas the date and which actual invoice is issued the actual date of issue of invoice is 23rd october so whichever is earlier is 20th october so for the entire value of 12 lakh even though it is paid in two parts still the time of supply would be 20th october guys clear yes this is all the time of supply for goods taxable under forward charge mechanism we will take a break now and we will continue after the break guys take a break okay.